here at Circuit Bread, we actually get a lot of questions about electricians wanting to be electrical engineers and seeing if there's any relationship in electrical engineers and their relationship with electricians. And we've tried to answer them as best as possible. But to be frank, we haven't had a whole lot of experience doing the electrician side of things. But recently, as in a couple of days ago, my wife and I just finished doing the rough in wiring for our house. We just moved recently. We're homeless at the moment. It's very sad. But we spent a little bit over two weeks, more like two and a half weeks, roughing in the electrical for our house. And it has been a crazy learning experience and just an interesting experience in general. So that is why right now I would like to share six of my personal impressions as an electrical engineer of what it is like to do electrician work. And hopefully this will help those electricians that are thinking about becoming electrical engineers, but probably it's gonna be more for electrical engineers that think, oh, I can do electrician work, which I thought I could do. And wow, what a humbling experience. So well, let's start the list. The first thing that I learned is that electrical work, uh, particularly in the construction side, is a lot more construction than I was anticipating. It was almost more, elect uh, more construction than electrical wiring, particularly at first. You're figuring out where you're gonna put the boxes and you're hammering in the boxes, and then you're figuring out where you're gonna put the run, so you're drilling holes and you're cutting pieces of wood to block the outlets and the switches and all that sort of stuff. So I was surprised that in the last two to three weeks, I have swung a hammer probably more than the rest of my entire life combined. And seeing as how I grew up on a farm, that's quite a bit. Of course, we used more sledgehammers and shovels, but hey, whatever. I swung a hammer a lot over the last couple of weeks, and I was just surprised at how little I was actually working with wiring when I was doing it. So I just found that fascinating, that I was expecting to do more of the wiring, more of the, the what I've now learned is the, um, the finish work, the putting in of the outlets, which we haven't even done yet, and putting everything together, and more of just the, how do we get these things from point A to point B? And it was a lot more construction than I was anticipating. The second thing that I learned is that it's physically demanding. I mean, I should have known that. I, it seems self-evident, but here I am, closer to 40 than I am 30 at this moment, and my hands, not having worked on it for a couple of days, are still swollen. I, I have scratches on my arms. I, I would wake up in the morning, all my knuckles are swollen. I'm so stinking tired. It is a physically demanding thing. You're up pulling wires like this and using weird muscles in your back that you didn't even know existed. And as I mentioned, you're swinging hammers and stuff like that. So being an electrician is an incredibly physically demanding job. Now, it was probably more physically demanding for me because one, I'm probably a little bit older than your average young electrician. Don't think about that statement too much. And uh, two, I'm, I'm not used to it. I, my wife makes me exercise, I'm fairly active, but I'm not doing those movements, not doing the pulling of the wires and the hammering and doing things upside down. Oh my goodness, I smashed my thumb so many times. So it's something that as you're doing it, one, you're probably only gonna be doing it eight to 10 hours a day, but since we were completely clueless, which we'll get into later, we were spending quite a bit more time every day, six days a week for those two and two and a half weeks. And I think that really took its toll on this aging body. So let's, um, let's just give a little bit more respect to, to the difficulty of being an electrician out there and the physical demands placed on their body to do what they do. Number three, the third thing that I thought about when I was working on that is that being an electrician, you're running everything on rules. Like, okay, I do this because the NEC says that you need to do this, and since I'm in this area and we've adopted these sections of the code, it says that I need to do this thing. That's very different from the electrical engineering side where you learn concepts and you learn principles and then you make decisions based on that. For example, it's something like, all right, you have, um, you have a bathroom and a bathroom needs its own dedicated circuit. And you need a 12 gauge wire for a 20 amp circuit in the bathroom. And that can be shared with somewhere else, another bathroom, but it has to be just in the bathrooms and GFCI uh, protected. That's the rule, that's what you have to do. Whereas an electrical engineer would say, okay, well, because this is a guest bathroom and nobody should ever be using a blow dryer in here, we could get away with a 14 gauge or a 15 amp circuit and we'll be okay. That's not the permit. So that was a really interesting thing for me to see was that 
everything is based on rules. And holy cow, there are a ton of rules. It's just, it was, it was crazy. I, the only reason I think we were able to even do it at all is because we have a good friend who's an electrician and we bugged him so much. He was incredibly patient and I'm certain that he's incredibly glad that we finally got the permit approved and everything's good. But we just kept on having to ping him for questions like, hey, what should we do? do here? What is the requirement here? What is the requirement there? Because there are just so many rules. So as an electrician, uh, to go through the school, my understanding is you do have to learn a lot of the concepts, but it seems like the majority of the work they have to do is based on the rules, the local ordinances there, and there's a lot of them. It's quite complex, and having the knowledge of what's acceptable practices and what's not sets them apart from people like my wife and I who were just muddling along and really hoping we were doing things all right according to the rules. In regards to safety, I felt pretty good. All the sheathing on the wire is good. We're connecting things properly. We're not going to start fires. But were we following the code? That was a constant concern that we had during the entire process. And frankly, it stressed me out. The fourth thing that I learned is that being an electrical engineer did help doing electrical work but not as much as I expected. The only place that I really saw it was when trying to figure out which wires go where and how to create the circuits. There were times that I was talking to my wife, who's more in the medical field, and not at all on the engineering side. Um, she would look at me like, I don't know why we're doing that. And I'd try to explain, her, explain it to her and she's like, I, you know, I don't care. And where, whereas when I was looking at it, oh, we need to do that. Okay, we can connect those and it'll go through there and it's not a big deal. Other than that, I really felt that my background in electrical engineering brought nothing to the table. I, I'm not gonna lie, I felt like I was pretty useless as an electrician. Yeah. The fifth thing that I thought about when I was in there is I was in the house at the same time as our HVAC guys and the plumbing guys. And they were all in there running ducts all over the place and pipes and all of this sort of stuff. And getting to know them was such a cool experience because I mean, these are incredibly talented people that were passionate, surprisingly passionate about their work. There was this one guy named Talon, and he was not a journeyman yet. He was still an apprentice, and he was so passionate about HVAC work. He loved it. He was proud of what he was doing. He was proud of his tools, and that was just really cool to me. And I was just incredibly impressed by the professionalism, the the joy that they took in doing good work. And honestly, it was just such a neat experience to rub shoulders with these guys and not have them treat me like an idiot because unlike them, I had no idea what I was doing and they didn't, they weren't jerks about it. And I really appreciated that. And so I got some really good experiencing seeing these tradespeople and thinking, man, this is pretty cool. And so it just made me I don't know, appreciate them more and to see the quality of people that are out there. And it made me feel a lot better about the whole experience. So the last thing that I thought about as I was doing all this was basically the practical benefits. So the reason my wife and I decided to do the electrical rough-in was to save money. I mean, it wasn't something we are like, hey, this sounds like a good way to spend a couple of weeks of our lives and get behind on all of our social and work obligations. No, it was like, we would like to save money because everything's crazy expensive right now. And this is at least one thing what we think that we can do. And I guess technically we did it, but oh, wow. Thank goodness for that friend, it was, it was rough. Even though we, we saved money, it did take a little bit longer than if we had had an electrician come. And the thing is, is that there's two of us working well more than eight hours a day, but because we spent so much time just looking at things and going, what are we supposed to do there? I don't know, should we bug Brian? It's 11 o'clock at night. We can wait until the morning, but should we move it? There was a lot of that that took up a great deal of our time because we just didn't know what we were supposed to be doing. So we did save money. It took a, a lot longer in man hours and in overall time. I think we took about a week longer than a real electrician would have. But we were we were glad that we were also to make we were also able to make things exactly as we wanted. We we were able to look at one point and say, hey, we, we've got a fish tank. I like fish. That's where I want to put the fish tank. And so we could put an outlet right there. So we could put the fish tank up against it and then hide it and make everything look nice. Whereas an electrician would walk in and be like, all right, I need to put outlets every six feet or 12 feet so you can go 
anyway, you need to put it and they would just kind of do whatever they want. And they can sometimes ask you what they want. And sometimes they just make assumptions that later you are like, oh, crud, I wish you had done that a different way. So it was really nice that we were able to customize it to our exact desires. But at the same time, there was also the fact that we were missing a lot of best practices where an electrician would be like, well, you're going to want these in these spots because of this. And we just, we hope, I mean, we don't know yet, but we hope that there aren't any places that we think, oh, crud, we really should have done that differently. And the funny thing was that we seem to be running to the store constantly because, oh, we need this. Oh, we only bought that many staples and we needed, I think we needed quadruple the amount of staples we anticipated we'd need. Granted, a lot of it was because you'd be holding it in a hammer and you'd hammer your thumb and it'd go flying and, oh, and I'm not picking that up. So that was, that was fun. But these practical considerations were, were interesting. And uh, frankly, I think I would be willing to do it again in the future, but my wife has definitely said she's never, ever doing it again. She has absolutely no interest. So those are the six impressions that I had as an electrical engineer doing this electrician work. And I'd be really interested to hear what any electricians watching this have to say. I, I, I wanna hear your perspective because I could be totally off base here. I, and that's one of those things I don't know. This was a completely new experience for me. The only electrical work I've done to this point has been doing switches and um, outlet changes and stuff like that. I've added outlets in my house, but nothing to this level and certainly not this early on in construction. And so I would love any of your insights and anything that you disagree with uh, my viewpoints, please leave it in the comments below because I would be fascinated to hear what you have to think about this. So I had a fascinating experience doing that electrical work and learned so much. But if you wanna learn about being an electrical engineer, go to circuitbread.com, subscribe to our channel here on YouTube so you can learn about circuits, microcontrollers, semiconductors, more, all of that good stuff. As it is, if you like this video, give it a like and we will catch you in the next one.